Changes in water flow, especially rapid, quick changes in lakes and rivers has a significant impact on catfish and their feeding habits. Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. Come along with me on this fishing trip as we discuss how water flow affects the catfish bite while I'm out fishing ahead of some heavy rains while the local utility company is moving a lot of water through our river system. Go right there. I think it may be going. That fish is swimming off. He is on it. That could be a good fish. So he's back on him. Roll that hook into the corner of his mouth. Just like that, folks. We're hooked up. Oh. Hooked up. Beautiful sunrise. It takes light. That beautiful from God to make my face tolerable in the morning. I hope y'all are doing well. Except on a fish. Y'all wonder what kind of reel this is. This is an ancient mariner reel. One of their little ones. I think they call it a 4000 series. I think I'm in this other line. Let's see if we can save it. It's a weird bike. It kind of went off kind of slow. Came over here and anchored up on a rock pile. Let's see what's in here. Hey, you see, shaking his head like a, not like a flathead. Feels more bluey. Good fish. Fish, good morning. Good morning, big female. Ah, stay buttoned. Your lips kind of. Shake and bake. Shake and bake, baby. We have some fishies. This one, right? Ah, 16, 17 pounds. Simmer down. Simmer down. Beautiful light on that fish. Nice fish to start. Good looking fish. All right, blue cap. Get back alive. Now, just to be clear for folks that are trying to wrap their head around this, in the major rivers like the Mississippi, the Missouri River, those type places, that current and water flow is determined more by rainfall than anything else. Whereas when you get into a lake system like the Tennessee River or the Catawba Chain, where I'm at, uh, it's really determined by the release of water from the hydroelectric dams. Now, obviously, rainfall plays a part because it adds to the increase in the amount of water in these systems, but they basically can turn on the water and turn the water off. And that's really what we're talking about here. There goes one. Boom. Decent bite. Not on fire, not crazy, but catching fish. Getting over to the dock side of the boat here. Staying down. There he is, coming in backwards. He is wrapped too. Another Tina. Big male, big male. Good fish. Good one. Nice looking fish. Another one in the teens. Good bite. You know, in some places, like on the Tennessee River, the release of water from these dams is 
almost predictable. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can go to the TVA website and actually look at their scheduled water releases. Now, where I fish on the Catawba Chain of Lakes, uh, we don't have that luxury. They do not announce any of the water flow. So, you have to use a little bit of guesswork, educated guesswork, to figure out when you think they're going to release water. Uh, for us, in the summertime, that means in the afternoon. Why? It gets hotter in the afternoon on the summertime, and people start turning on the air condition, the uh, demand for electricity goes up, and that's what most of these hydro stations are used for, peak electrical demand. In the wintertime, it's usually in the morning. You'll see the water releases early because what happens? People get up out of bed, it's cold, they turn the heat on, people are going to work, uh, getting back in business, and there's a peak electrical demand. So we kind of have to guess at it. Now, in this situation, uh, we've got a lot of rain coming, and uh, the utilities are moving water out of the lake. They want to drop the level of the lake so that when you get this massive amount of rain, the lakes can accommodate that water and basically store it and help prevent flooding. So a little bit of a gamble here and going out, but uh, as you can see, it's paying off with some fish. Boom, got one going. Uh, made a little move here with the boat. Uh, pulled out into a hump, middle of the uh, lake. Uh, it's basically an old underwater island. And uh, just uh, anchored up here. They're starting to pull water. We've got a bunch of rain coming in later this afternoon, tonight for the next couple of days. And they're talking several inches of rain. And that means an inch of rain across this basin means a foot rise in the lake. So they're going to get two or three inches. That's several feet of water. So they're going to move some water out of here. And that's what they're doing right now. Water's on. It's on since my last location, so might help with the bite here a little bit. We will see. There's another good blue. AC Sima, Sima, Sima. Oh, AC Simmer, Simmer. Nice fish, probably could have lifted them, but I hate stressing knots and leaders. If you don't have to. Nice little fish. Good future fish there for the lake, future trophy. Back alive. Now, as an angler, it's always a good idea to pay attention to the weather. Not only will it keep you from uh, not having your rain suit or getting snowed on or getting hit by lightning, but paying attention to what's going on with the weather a few days down the road, maybe a week down the road, uh, will give you an advantage like I had here in knowing that, hey, this is a good time to get out on the water because you're going to be dropping the lake level. So another reason as an angler, uh, we need to be kind of uh, armchair uh, weathermen at the same time. This one may load it up. Let's see if he stayed on there. Slack, slack, slack. Yep, there he is. I don't think that fish knows it's hooked yet. There he is. He knows he's hooked now. Two hits back to back. Water's been on about 15 minutes. And I'm many miles from the dam, so it's been on for a while, but starting to pull it normally they don't pull it this time of the year until later in the day once it warms up people start turning on the air conditioners i'm gonna go on a little bit early today i think they're trying to get the water out of the system it's like the same age class fish get a little bit bigger it's a good one Dang. Hammer. another one not quite a teener about 12 pounds 11 12 pounds Good fat belly. Oh, yeah. Good fish. Eating some mussels, it looks like. Back alive. It's two fish in a hurry. Dude, I got one that is headed to South Carolina. <laughs> he hit it and took off. Get it on out of here. Get bit. Good thing. Nothing but gizzard shad today. Nothing but gizzards. 
Got some left. They're about at their last day of usability, as I call it. So I decided to burn on through them. It's another one that same age class, about 12 pounds. Fun, fun fish to catch. Yeah. This one's a little bigger. They simmer down. Oh, baby. There it is. Pretty fish. Man, a lot of these females moving through here. Think everybody's getting ready to make that spawn. It's good fishing right now. The bad part is, get this one back alive. That's bad is, this fishing is pretty good right now. Pretty good catch rates. Uh, nice, fun sized fish to catch. A few big ones. Bad part is it's gonna to come to a halt probably pretty soon. So have to catch them all we can. They're getting ready to spawn. The males that you're catching are dark, beat up. Uh, so enjoy it while we can. It's it's getting toward the end of May, and that's usually what happens. It's like a light switch sometimes. All of a sudden you get to the next day and you can't find a fish. But for now we'll catch them. Got another one. It's funny, I rolled up on this hump out here and uh, I didn't mark any fish, hardly anything up here. Some stuff out on the drop deeper water, but kind of just came up onto the point hump, whatever you want to call it. It's really just an underwater island, as I said, and figured there may be some fish moving up here to feed. Now, I did get lucky when I got here, they turned the water on, so we got some current. That's helping get some scent spread, but They definitely pulling up here to get them a bite to eat, or at least look for it. Got him loose. Quick release. That's a smaller one than what we've had, but uh, another good fish. They're biting. Let's see if we can stay on them in here. Boom, guys, our chest got anchored up and chest sat down. Got what appears to be a smaller fish taking a bait already. Decided to make a little move, get a little further up in, not quite the river, but the upper ends of the lake. Just take advantage of some of the current and water movement. Literally just got the baits out. This one went over. I'm parked in a little eddy. Um, this is a place where you'll see Normally when you're out here after some high water, debris will pull up in this area. So that tells me there's a little eddy effect going on right here. Something that you can, if you fish waters regularly, you'll be able to notice. And uh, so yeah, it tells me there's a little current break here for some reason. Probably has to do with the bottom structure and what's going on. There are a lot of these fish feeding right now for whatever. Easy, slow down, slow down, slow down. Up, up, you got my bow. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. That was good. Boom, got it. Got him. Poof. Another fat female. Good looking fish. That's right, you get to go free. Now, one other thing to keep in mind when fishing uh, these reservoirs is that the further up the lake you go, as it starts to narrow down and you get into the river, the swifter that water is going to be. Uh, main reason being is because you've got uh, less, you know, area for that water to be moving through, so the current's going to be swifter. And I tell you this because, generally speaking, those areas when the water release happens will be the first to spark a bite and the first one to shut down. But what happens is these fish are not going to feed forever. At some point, they're going to calm down, they're going to be done eating, and they're going to go find places to seek shelter and a break from the current. So the closer you are to the dam and that, when that water release happens, 
uh, probably the more you know significant your increase in the bite's going to be, but then it's going to go away quicker too. Fish is dragging a mess through here. Oh, there he goes. Let's see how much of this I can clear myself of. Ah, all right, we have to do some master angling here. He's going up north to the front of the boat. Let me go fetch him. This is amazing. Somehow, he went above the anchor rope, which was very nice of him. I'm going back down this side of the boat. That fish just went, I don't know, 270 degrees around the boat. I don't think he got tangled in a line. And he swam over the anchor road. A lot of good luck right there in that fish. This is two bites and I hadn't been here no time. I'm going to have to reset those rods. But two quick bites. It's a little bigger fish. It's like a big female again. Got it. Oh. That one. Now we'll go into the teens. Be about yeah, 14 pounds. Good looking fish. Nice blue. That one back alive too. Well folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're gonna like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know, just watch them both, they're both good.